get started and I'm and I'm gonna play harmonium and chant for a little bit and I want to give you the opportunity during that time to sit and kind of get grounded I also since this is going to be restorative I don't know what you have near you to practice today but this would be a day to have pillows to have a couch or a bench to use for your legs um, I'm gonna try and demo a poop pillow is absolutely perfect um, I'm gonna try and demo with yoga props and with things that you might have in your house so um, yeah, if you wanna take this time to sit and listen or chant with me, great. If you wanna take this time to go and retrieve some more props, that is also great. I'm gonna check my phone one more time to see if there are any panicked. I didn't get the something something emails in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'll turn my volume off. <laughs> Good idea, Anne. Thank you for saying that. So let's all say hi one more time. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Hi. Thank you. And now in the lower left corner of your screen is something that says mute. It's a microphone. And once you've done it, you'll see the little red microphone pop up on your screen. Katie, you're going to have to text Steph about how to do it. She's already lost her. She's not showing me her video. Katie, can you deal with that? Oh my gosh, too cute. So I'm going to chant the Gayatri Mantra. And it means it's a praise, it's a prayer, it's a celebration of the eternal earth, air, heaven, that glory, that resplendence of the sun. May we contemplate the brilliance of that light. May the sun inspire our minds. your shoulders up by your ears, relax them down. Hmm. If you haven't already come to a comfortable seat, maybe on the edge of a blanket, maybe on a chair, maybe on a cushion, maybe on your socks, maybe anything you've got nearby. With your hands on your legs, feel your legs. Maybe you feel them with the palms of your hands or with the back of your hands. Wiggle your jaw side to side. Inhale, shoulders up. Exhale, shoulders down. Coming to our mat during these times when we are quarantined, when we are self-isolating, when we are physical distancing is such a beautiful thing because it allows us to feel the tension that we're carrying. We're spending a lot of days hunched over computers and smart devices. 
We're spending a lot of time with our shoulders stiff. So anytime we can sit and feel what's underneath us, we then have the opportunity to relax a little something. Sometimes we relax a lot. Sometimes we just acknowledge and feel the tension we've got. Yoga suggests that there's nothing wrong with anything that we feel or think, but that we can choose our next thought and word and action. So I invite you in this practice today to choose to breathe, to choose to feel, to give yourself this special time to feel your feelings, to feel your sensations. You're on mute so you can cry and yell. Let's bring our hands together in front of our hearts. Lift your heart and bow your head. I invite you to chant the sound of OM with me three times. OM reminds us that everything is a cycle, a beginning, a middle, an end, and a timeless quality. You can have your hands together in front of your heart. You can have one hand on top of each other, on top of your chest. You can leave your hands on your thighs. OM is a chance, an opportunity that for right now we breathe together. I love this idea that chanting the sound of OM is like throwing a pebble into a pond and the ripples ripple out far beyond what we can see. So maybe when we chant OM, we chant with ourselves from the past and the future or everyone else who is chanting this morning. Let's breathe in together. Oh. Oh. Relax your hands down to your thighs. Take your left first finger into your thumb, making a Gyana Mudra, a wisdom seal. Palm up and take your right hand up in front of your face. Tuck your first two fingers down into your palm. This means your left finger can come to your, your left finger. Your ring finger can come to your left nostril and your thumb to your right. You can also rest your first two fingers in between your eyebrows if that's more comfortable. Instead of curvy and tall, you can prop things up on your right thigh so you don't have to hold your elbow up. We're going to use the hand here to alternate breathing through one nostril and then the other. Let's breathe in fully and deeply through both nostrils. And exhale through both nostrils. Close your right nostril with your thumb and inhale left for three, two, one. Close left, exhale right. Three, two, one. Inhale right. Three two, one, close right, exhale left. That's one round of Nadi Shodhana. Inhale left, two, one, close left, exhale right, three, two, one. Inhale right, three, two, one, close right, exhale left. That's a second slower round. Keep breathing this horseshoe pattern of breath, balancing your inhale and your exhale unless it makes you feel really stressed. And if that's where you are today, then relax your right hand down and balance your inhale and your exhale without the bow. A lot feels beyond our control. Sometimes to do a small thing, to breathe through one nostril and then the other, or to wash a teacup, or to make the bed, can ground us back into our capabilities, our strength, our experience of now. Let the lower jaw rest away from the top jaw. And the next time you exhale through your left nostril, no hurry to get there, release your right hand down. Feel the breath, feel your feelings. 
If the eyes are closed, blink them open. Take your hands, make some circles in the wrists. Stretch your fingers wide, make fists. Shrug your shoulders up, back, and down. I'm gonna invite you to climb into a heart bench. Now I know that some of you have yoga props at home and some of you don't. So I'll demonstrate a few different ways to practice a heart bench. So one block on the tall height, one block on the low, medium height. Your head would go on the tall height and the back of your heart on the medium height. And what I have found out is that packages of Skyline Chili, which you can get from Cincinnati delivered by Amazon, if that's where your family is from and your 11 year old misses it, you can put that on the tall height and that on the medium height. It won't be so comfortable though, so you could put a blanket over that. So the idea is to get your head higher than your heart. The quarantine has not led you to buy Skyline Chili. You could take a couple blankets. You could take a couple blankets, <clears throat> roll them into a Tootsie Roll, put them on your mat, and then take one of your pillows from your couch or your bed and put that up there so that's higher. So either way, whatever you choose, you're gonna lay down so that your spine and your heart is lifted and your head is a little higher than your heart. So your chin naturally falls down, softens down. That's a much more gentle term. You can keep the knees bent with your feet on the floor. You can lengthen your legs long with your arms by your side. You can also choose to bend your knees out to the side and have your feet touch. I'm gonna demonstrate these shapes today, spend a breath or two in them with you, and then I'm gonna sit up and read something. So, laying back, letting your jaw relax. This can feel like a big opening across the jaw, across the hips. Look, let your face look just straight forward, not looking, not looking to me, nothing exciting to see here. I'm talking to you, Steph. <laughs> so sometimes palms up feels really relaxed, and sometimes palms down feels really relaxed. So this is all about you. What allows your shoulders and your chest to take a break. Take a big breath in through your nose. Hi, Shelby. Exhale, sigh. Steph, I feel like your head's a lot higher than is comfortable. Maybe you could relax it back a little bit. Whatever's under your head, can you turn it down a little bit? So, yeah. Does that allow your shoulders to soften a bit? Shelby's wagging her tail, so I think that's a good sign. My teacher Karina posted the other day about um, the link between the word courage and the French word for heart, core. And it reminded me of this writing from David White. Feel the block under your head and soften your jaw. Feel whatever's underneath the back of your heart and let yourself lean into it. Can let you let your front body soften down heavy into the back body. It's almost like you massage the back of the lungs, maybe the kidneys in this way as well. Courage is a word that tempts us to think outwardly to run bravely against opposing fire, to do something under besieging circumstances, and perhaps above all, to be seen to do it in public, to show courage, to be celebrated in story, rewarded with medals, given the accolade. But a look at its linguistic origins is to look in a more interior direction toward its original template, the old Norman French core or heart. Courage is the measure of our heartfelt participation with life, with another, with a community, a work, a future. To be courageous is not necessarily to go anywhere or do anything except to make conscious those things we already feel deeply 
and then to live through the unending vulnerabilities of those consequences. To be courageous is to seat our feelings deeply in the body and in the world. To be courageous is to seat our feelings deeply in the body and in the world. To live up to and into the necessities of relationships that often already exist with things we find we care deeply about, with a person, a future, a possibility in society, or with an unknown that begs us on and always has begged us on. To be courageous is to stay close to the way we are made. The French philosopher Camus used to tell himself quietly to live to the point of tears, not as a call for model and sentimentality, but as an invitation to the deep privilege of belonging. The way belonging affects us all, shapes us all, and breaks our heart at a fundamental level. It is a fundamental dynamic of human incarnation to be moved by what we feel, as if surprised by the actuality and privilege of love and affection and its possible loss. Courage is what love looks like when tested by the simple everyday necessities of being alive. Stay just where you are, it's perfect. Draw a long, slow breath in through your nose. Exhale to sigh. You're welcome to change the hands or the feet, the knees or the calves. These shapes in yin yoga invite us to be still, to stretch deeply. Not the active stretch of reaching for a leg and a pulling. Not that kind of stretch. A deep letting go, a courageous softening. To let the muscle soften, to let the part of our body that does, that acts, that moves, to let that part pause. It shifts the parts that are firmer inside us, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, and that stretches. That stretches deep, that stretches uncomfortable. So relax your tongue, soften your jaw, and breathe right here, right now, just like this, for a few more breaths. Hmm. <clears throat> if your knees are out to the side, then gently bring them up so the soles of your feet are on the ground. If your arms have moved far away from the body, draw them in, turn your palms down to feel whatever's beneath the blanket, floor, beach towel, whatever you've got. And then draw your elbows back. Lift your head, peek at your knees, and you decide. You can roll over to the right and come up to sit, or you can press into the elbows and the hands and lift up. Keep the knees bent, but walk the feet forward one foot. Bent. And then gently bring your belly to your thighs your shoulders towards your knees, and finally your chin towards your chest. Where do your shoulders relax best? Your arms beside you, your elbows bent, arms on the legs, or are your arms long in front of you? Let the head just hang. Hmm. Relax your right ear to your right shoulder. And let your shoulders soften. And draw your head into center. Let your left ear come down towards your left shoulder. And bring your chin back to center. 
and gently roll your low back back behind you, then your middle back, then your shoulders, and then lift your head up. Hmm. I'm gonna have you turn so that you can open your legs up into kind of a straddle split. So I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. Have your skyline chili, your blocks, your books, your pillows, whatever you've got here, and, and bring the legs out wide. So bringing the legs out wide, it stretches the back of the legs. It can stretch the low back too. So if those areas are feeling tight, you might stretch the legs out wide and feel like you're sitting way back. On days when that happens, you can sit on the edge of a pillow, where you can sit on the edge of a blanket. So I'm thinking that my running friends might, might wanna sit up on the edge of something. How's my volume? Do I need to speak up or are we good? Are we good? Thumbs up if we're good? Great. So I'm gonna bend my left knee and you've got a choice. Open your left knee out to the side. This is external rotation. If you like internal rotation, that could be bringing the top of the foot to what's ever beside you. This has the added benefit of stretching quads. Quads can get kind of tight sometimes when we sit a lot. So if this feels okay on the knee and the hip joint, I'd recommend this one. And if it doesn't, listen to the body because it knows way more than I do or you do. Sometimes the knee out to the side still feels tight. So you could put something underneath like a block or a blanket. I like putting it under close to the thigh so the core, the wisdom, the center of the body feels supported. And then when you're ready, wiggle the right foot, tuck the chin in and lean over your right leg. So we're not reaching for anything, we're folding forward. This might be a place where you bring books or blocks underneath the forearms. You could also bring pillows from your couch, stack them up, or your bed if you're in the bedroom, and lean forward this way. The difference in my body when there's something that I'm leaning on is huge. I can lean forward, I do feel a stretch that way, but when I have this support immediately, my left hip and low back stretch differently. Because there's a wisdom in your body that knows when your muscles are too tight, when they're not relaxed, and then the yin tissue doesn't stretch. So wiggle your right foot side to side, let that relax. Tuck your chin in and look down. Steph, can you put a, a pillow or something on top of your arm so your head is on something? Yeah. Doesn't that feel better on your shoulders? Mm -hmm. Bernie, soften your elbows back towards your ribs a little bit. See if that relaxes the back of your neck and shoulders. Nice. Let's take a breath in here and let a breath go. To finish that, that section on courage by David White. We become courageous whenever we live closely and to the point of tears with any new possibility made known to us. Whenever we demonstrate a faith in the interior enunciations and align ourselves with the new oof, and surprising and heartfelt necessities of even the average existence to allow ourselves to feel deeply and thoroughly what has already come into being is to change our future simply by living up to the consequences of knowing what we hold in our affections. From the inside, it can feel like confusion. Only slowly do we learn what we really care about and allow our outer life to be realigned in that gravitational pull. With maturity, that robust vulnerability that comes to feel like the only necessary way forward, the only real invitation, the surest, safest ground from which to step. On the inside, we come to know who and what and how we love and what we can do to deepen that love. Only from the outside and only by looking back does it look like courage.
Notice if your teeth are touching and if they are, let there be some space there. Feel whatever is touching your arms. And with your thinking mind, tell your upper arm muscles to soften, your neck to do less. And just a couple more breaths like this. Excellent choice, Kathy. Hmm. Let your head stay heavy. And draw your elbows back, your hands back. Put your fingertips onto something that's not your leg. And roll your low back behind you, then your middle back, then your upper back. Shrug your shoulders up. Look forward and side. Release your left leg long. It might feel nice to move the leg side to side. Maybe to point and flex the ankles, wiggle the toes. This is certainly a practice where you can have socks on. And then we'll practice with the right knee bent. So the right knee out to the side, the right knee forward. We know that our, that our feet are different sizes. It makes sense to us in our mind that one side of the body is different from the other side of the body. And yet we can still expect that what happened before is what happens next. That's kind of like a big global thing happening right now, what we expect to happen this, this season or the next day. So support this leg whatever way is best. The knee doesn't hurt. If the knee hurts, it's telling you, giving you the opportunity to do something kind and helpful so you can get that stretch. When you're ready, tuck your chin in, turn to the left, and lean forward and down. So just start here. Just make a beginning. Pile things up so the body feels connected. The beauty of that piling up really high, really firmly, is that as the body softens, you may find that you want to lift things up more or move things further down the leg or soften them down towards the earth. Feel a connection to whatever you're leaning on. Feel like it's actually holding some of your weight because the muscles don't relax when they need to work. So how do you let the muscles know that they don't have to work? Through contact, through slow, excuse me, through slow, steady breath. So lovely. You're in the cadence of your own breath, being curious about the quality of the inhale and exhale. Nothing to change, to perfect, to do more. Simply drawing yourself into a relationship with your breath is so courageous, is so very real and now and you. I'm not sure how much you've been crying these days, but obviously since I'm bringing it up, I've been crying. And I found that when I go in the bathroom and really cry, as opposed to putting on the brave face or waiting till later, that it's really releasing and soothing. It's very natural to want to control, to think of that as our power. I love the yogic idea that our power, our wisdom, our grace, our kindness comes in how we choose what we do, say, or think next. Florence Nightingale wrote, I never lose the opportunity, the opportunity of urging a practical beginning, however small. For it is wonderful how often the mustard seed germinates and roots itself. This is from Ralph Gates' book, Meditations from the Mat. He says, at the heart of pratyahara, at the heart of drawing the senses inward, is the notion that we're already there. We're already in heaven and heaven exists in us right now. We must simply stop reinforcing the fear that it is not so. 
And so with Pratyahara, we begin the practice of meditation, the practice of stopping. Our first moments in stillness, whether it's on a meditation cushion or in a yin yoga shape, feel a lot like slamming on the brakes in a car. All sorts of things keep moving even though the car isn't. It takes the mind a while to figure out that we're no longer moving and that we're serious about being still. I think it takes the muscles a while to figure out that we are okay with pausing. A tussle then ensues, Rolf says, as to who will be in charge of the time spent like this, the restless mind or the one who has decided to be still. This tussle is the domain of pratyahara. Just as there is yoga on the mat and yoga off the mat, there is pratyahara on the cushion and off the cushion. In the stillness, on the cushion, pratyahara is the process of letting go of distraction. It's the twilight place between everyday consciousness and singular pointed concentration. Let's inhale together here and sigh. Start to draw the elbows back, press the hands down. Let the head stay heavy as you roll the low back behind you, then the ribs, then the shoulder blades, and then lift the head. Use the right hand to release the right leg long. <clears throat> Pause for a moment, close your eyes and feel it. Feel the effect of the stretch, the relief in releasing the right leg. Feel the enjoyment, feel the annoyance of what's going around or within, feel it. Hmm. I'm going to invite you to come into um, Praying Mantis. So I'll demonstrate Praying Mantis with blocks first, and then I'll demonstrate Praying Mantis with a bench. You could practice Praying Mantis on, um, you want a stable surface. So with yoga blocks, it kind of looks like this. Two blocks, shoulder width distance apart, elbows on the blocks. You're not going to bring your belly back to your hips. You're going to let your belly hang down and your upper arm bones, your humeri, instead of them being forward and up, you're going to invite them to come down. So there's a big arch in my low back. The arms could stay forward. The hands could come to the back of the head. You can have the toes tucked, the tops of the feet flat. You can cross the ankles. There's a chance that many of you don't have yoga blocks or an eight pack of Skyline Chili. So what you could do is bring a chair or a bench onto your mat, or you could turn and use the edge of the sofa and bring your elbows there and sink down this way. You could be on the edge of your coffee table. So the point is to feel a big stretch in the top of the shoulders. So drop your head, Steph, bring your hands behind your head, and bring your hips back a bit. Feel a curve in the low back. Imagine, Katie, that looks perfect. Imagine you were kind of making a hammock with your torso. So, oh my God, Jeter's hilarious with that ball. Um, it's like your hips are kind of being pulled back towards one tree and your elbows would be hugging another tree. Can you imagine that feeling? If you're feeling a lot of pressure on the top of your shoulders, congratulations, you're doing it right. So now that you're doing it right, how do you be here and suffer less? So part of it, huh, part of not suffering here is not needing it to be different. Equanimity is choiceless awareness. To choose to be where you are right now to choose not to have it feel any differently, and to find what is the way that you soften your jaw? What actions do you take to breathe more easily into your belly, into your ribs, and into your chest? If we only focus on the part that is uncomfortable right now, we miss so many other parts. So a big stretch in the front of the shoulders, but feel how easy it is to breathe into the top of your lungs here. Maybe feel an openness across your armpits. But if this sensation is traveling down like a nervy electrical sensation to your wrists, then find a way to ease back 
so that you still feel a stretch, but you don't feel like a pinch or a zing. Right, so looking for the connective tissue to have a big stretch, not so much the nerves to be impeded that way. I remember my first praying mantis. I remember not liking it. I remember being upset that my shoulders were this tight because I was no So smile here. Breathe your breath. Feel your feelings for just a few more breaths. So knowing it's a few more breaths, maybe you relax your shoulders or your jaw. You're doing great, Laura. Hmm. I invite you to come forward so slowly, so slowly, start to inch the knees towards your elbows. So slowly, put more weight into the elbows as the knees come forward and then press up off the blocks. You can come to stand on your shins. You can sit on your bottom. Give your shoulders a roll up, back, and down. Ooh, lots of good movement there. Hmm. And then make your way to hands and knees. Mr. Bandito, can you do that right over? Can you just, right here is good. Right there, okay? I recommend having a pillow or a blanket, not for you silly, or even a yoga block, right close to the side of your mat. We're gonna come into a sleeping swan, a hip opener. So you're gonna bring your right knee forward from hands and knees. And now move your right knee towards your right wrist. That kind of brings your right heel in front of your left thigh, yeah? So come hands and knees, right knee over, you got it. And now sink your hips, <laughs> Sink your hips back and down. So the idea is that your waistband is level. So if my right hip is really high, I've got a lot of weight over onto my left side. So the more I sit back and down onto my right hip, the more I feel both a stretch in my right hip and the front of my left thigh. I need you to go over here for a moment, sir. Thank you. And then you come down to the elbows. This is where, oh, practicing at home is so sweet because you can be on all the blankets. If you use blocks, you can have your head on a block blocking the view. If this just zings the heck out of your right knee, then to practice this shape on your back is really sweet on your low back. That would be coming to a figure four with the right knee on the right ankle and gently holding on to the left thigh. Sometimes when I come into figure four, I like to have that stack of cans or a block actually on the, by the left foot so that the foot could be there or the toe can be there and I don't feel like I have to use my arms so much. So some people say that flexing the right foot is really good in this shape, that it protects the knee. What feels good on your knee, to point your foot or flex your foot? So this hip opener is opening the low back, it's opening the connective tissue around the right hip, and it's stretching things in the front of the left hip. It's not about pressing your ankle anywhere. So you can put anything you like under or around the ankle. If maybe the back left knee is uncomfortable, you could put something there. And when you arrive, draw a long, slow breath in and sigh.
if you are feeling something that feels unbearable and you want to turn on your audio and ask me a question, you're totally welcome to. Or you can wave at me and show me where you're feeling it and I can offer suggestions. So after we practice pratyahara, drawing our awareness within, we practice equanimity, choiceless awareness of what is going on. We're invited on the yoga path to practice dharana or concentration. BKS Iyengar says fixing the consciousness at one point or region is concentration. We learn to bring our attention to one point and we train our minds to stay there. The point of concentration can be external as in a yoga pose. It can be internal as in a mindfulness or meditation practice. On the mat, we experience dharana quite often during those moments when we lose track of time, when our minds become so absorbed in the physical experience of a shape that we're no longer connected to everyday concerns. In dharana, the past and future have dissolved and we're simply existing in the now. Ralph well, says, I experienced Aharana in every class I teach, and that's how I know that teaching you, that's how I knew that teaching yoga was a healing path for me. Most of us are fortunate enough to have found activities that draw forth this deep concentration. When we are doing something we truly love, we cannot help but give ourselves to it wholeheartedly. It means when we're being courageous and feeling it, we're practicing Aharana. So Daharana, therefore, is a byproduct of love. It's the clarity that happens in a, in a focused mind. We find the timeless place where we connect to spirit. And in this sense, Daharana is our pathway to spirit, to the thing in us that is not our me, our job, our name. That thing that is us. Let's all take a big breath in here. And sigh. We'll start to sit up a bit, bringing the elbows back, the hands back. Press down to lift up. And make your way, in whatever way makes sense, to go back to hands and knees. You could sit over on the right side and bring the left knee forward and press up that way. You can press yourself up and stretch your right leg back. When you get to hands and knees, do stretch the right leg back. Open up the back of that knee. Maybe you lift and drop the hip. Maybe you move the ankle. Sometimes we put a lot of pressure on that. Maybe you want to lift the leg or do some fire hydrant circles. Some puppy dog wiggle side to side, hips one way and then the other. Maybe round like a cat, arch like cow shaped pose. Hmm. And then draw the left knee forward, the left knee over to the side, right leg long behind you. The side will need different things, different props, different arrangement of the bones. Maybe you have a tendency to call this side the something side. If you do label what you're experiencing, could it be devoid of judgment? Could it just be this side is tighter without saying this side is bad, lazy, whatever words you might use sometimes when the critical thinking mind comes in. This side, just like the rest of you, is doing the very best it can. <gasps> Hi, kitty. <laughs> When you're ready, start to lean forward, down, forward, down, and in. So where you place your elbows has an effect on your shoulders. I'm thinking about you, Steph. So if your shoulders are way high up, Steph, can you see the picture of Katie? You see how relaxed her shoulders look? Do that. Maybe move the shoulders out away from center stuff. More like away from you, out away. Yeah. And now put support under your rib cage so your shoulders and head relax. Does that make sense?
<laughs> Kristen, is that helpful? That's <laughs> Oh, draw a deep breath in and sigh. <sighs> Daharana is not something that we do, it's something that happens. It's the result of surrendering to love. In the gladness of love, we let go of our resistance to life. The present moment becomes acceptable and we're overtaken by the real. We experience this as Daharana. The words we use to describe it off the mat are deep concentration or flow, but in fact, what we are experiencing is deep connection. In the deep connection that is Daharana, we are alive in a fashion that bears only slight resemblance to ordinary life. We've applied ourselves to something we love, gardening, race car driving, parenting, yoga, and we have withstood the rigors of love. In our fidelity, we have broken through our fear and found ourselves in a state of deep connection. Love draws us deep into itself, deep into a place beyond space and time, fear and doubt, words and failure. Each time we are drawn to this place, we emerge forever changed. The qualities of this place become more real to us, more accessible. And we find that we are guided by a thinking that is beyond words. It is so natural as a human in a body having a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual experience of life that we feel deeply. And sometimes we don't know and we want to know, we want it qualified, we want it in a box in black and white. And in times like this, there is so much that we don't know and can't be known. Which is a really awesome opportunity to be okay with not having all the answers. It doesn't tend to feel comforting if you are someone who likes to be organized in control, yeah? So can you be happy right now with the big sensation of this stretch, guided by the wisdom of the mind that knows that stretch is a good sensation? You have felt stretches before, you know that afterwards you feel good, you know that being patient with that sensation is ultimately not something to fear, but something that you can read and there's a quality of surrender to. When we arrive in this moment, not grasping for something else, not pushing away something we think is to come, we get to rest. We give ourselves an opportunity to rest. I may be teaching this class, but you are practicing the class. You are having the experience of practicing yoga. So you can stay here for a few more moments, a few more soft, gentle breaths. But if the body is telling you, if there is a wisdom beyond words that is telling you that it's time to come out of this shape, then you are welcome to come out. And the great secret that we learn as we make enough trips around the sun is that we can always pause, say enough, be done for now. And that so often we fear judgment or repercussions that aren't even there. Let's inhale together here and sigh. Let's see how slowly you can take your time to bring your elbows back, your hands back. Let your head be heavy here, not lifting the head to look around, pressing into the ground to lift up, and then making your way back into hands and knees. 
And see what stretches feel good on your left side. Certainly giving the back of that knee a chance to stretch. The foot could be on the ground. The foot could be lifted, pointing and flexing. Fire hydrant circles. Puppy dog side to side. Cow and cat. So I'd love to invite you to practice a restorative yoga shape that um, my first restorative yoga teacher called Instant Maui. So hopefully you all have a positive association with Hawaii. If not, call it Instant whatever your place is that you want to go. So Instant Maui is practiced by putting the calves of your legs on a chair or a bench. So to practice this, I'm going to have a blanket nearby. And I'm going to use my couch because I think it's the easiest thing to do here. I'm going to bring my legs up onto the couch so that a lot of the weight of my legs is on the couch. And the couch is actually a little too high for me. I'm going to change to a bench in a moment, but I feel like this was easier to, to demonstrate. And then, and then my neck doesn't love it here. And I want, I want your neck to love it. So I'm going to take a blanket that has like the open edge and I'm going to flop it over top of me, bring it under my head so that the edges of the blankets can come up onto my shoulders. So it lifts my head a little bit. I'm nestled into this and the blanket on the top of my shoulders feels really, really good. It's gentle, it's soft, it's warm. Excellent. Steph, are your calves touching something or just your feet? Can you move so the calves of your legs are on whatever's there? I think that'll be more relaxing. Yeah? Excellent. Anne's resting her legs on an asteroid in outer space. I'm going to trust that she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Yeah, Liz, you might find that the closer you get, the more weight you put onto the legs. That's good. Patricia and Bernie are totally out of view. So whatever allows your low back to feel like you're being held here. So the, the legs taking the weight. from the low back onto whatever support you've chosen. So the secret of restorative yoga is that it's really hard in some ways. It's really hard to set up a shape where the teaching, the invitation, the point is to feel next to nothing. Why? Why would I want to feel nothing? Yin's all about feeling this deep stretch. Why, why would restorative be any good to feel nothing? The way I understand it, the wisdom behind restorative yoga is that we carry not only the tension in our shoulders and our neck that we feel as a crick or a strain, we carry a lot of deep held fear and stress that we're so good at holding that we're not even aware of anymore. So if we put the body into shapes where props or blankets or blocks or bolsters hold the body, then things that the body is ready to soften, it may. It may give the part of us that is ready to fight or run away or freeze. It may give that part of our existence a chance to switch over to the, the rest and digest part of us. And what can allow us to rest and digest is setting up shapes so that the body feels safe enough and welcomed enough to breathe all around the space of the belly, to expand side to side, 
into the very low back. Maybe you feel it into the groins. There's no need to deepen your breath to force it. Simply an opportunity to pause and welcome each breath to do what it does so brilliantly. You breathed all night long. Lao Tzu wrote, always we hope someone else has the answer. Some other place will be better, some other time it will all turn out. This is it. No one else has the answer. No other place will be better, and it's already turned out. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are, and you know what you want. There's no need to run outside for better seeing, nor to peer from a window. Rather, abide at the center of your being, for the more you leave it, the less you learn. Search your heart and see that the way to do is to be. We've heard of the concepts of yin and yang, of sun and moon, of awake and asleep. This rest is not a waste of time. It is not like sleep. It is choosing to be awake and still. It is choosing to comfort the body while you are awake to say, I am worthy of pausing and resting. I have done enough to deserve a deeper breath, a gentleness across and within my being. To maybe feel the beat of your heart or the pulse. To feel the front body soft and down into the back body. If the angle of the legs invites the feet to fall asleep, you're welcome to draw the knees closer in and give yourself a hug. Or maybe stay right here, right now, for a few more breaths. start to draw your knees in. Maybe put your feet, the whole foot or the heels on the edge of what the legs were resting upon. Maybe you want to lengthen the legs and circle one at a time or two at a time. Maybe you want to bend the knees and find a little happy baby. Maybe you're ready to roll over into your right side and just pause. Hmm. This pause is savoring that last bite of dessert, and that last moment of your run. And then press down with your hands, lift yourself up to sit. Hmm. 
I'm going to invite you to come into a reclining shape that is similar to the heart bench that you practiced in the beginning. But the heart bench in the beginning was meant to have you feel a lot in the arms and in the legs and to feel the curve in the low back. This version is really sweet and gentle. So we'll demonstrate yoga props and no yoga props. So if you had blocks, you would put one on the medium height, one on the low height. Chances are, if you have yoga blocks, you have yoga blankets. You could also put a bolster here. So you're gonna bring your low back right up against this if you have this configuration. But maybe you are home without these things. Lucky for you, because you get to practice a really sweet one. So one couch cushion or pillow, a second couch cushion or pillow. You think about this shit, yeah. So I've got one down and then another on top. So you can see how this could lift the back of my heart. This color is not good. So one low and then one on top. So I'm creating something to meet my back. And then I'm gonna place another pillow here, or even sweeter could be a folded blanket. If you use a folded blanket, you then have that opportunity to do those edges around your shoulder. So it would look like this. This is only part of the shape. So once you get this configuration, come back and sit up. So this could allow these blankets to come over my edge. And so my head is a little further back than I want. I'm gonna yeah, so now I feel like nestled and my jaw relaxed. So the idea is if your chin is towards your chest, if your head is lifted up to the right angle for you, then your jaw will relax because there's no strain to hold. So that's what we'll do for the head and for the heart. And then you'll take other blankets, roll them up into tubes, and put them on either side of your legs. So in that beginning shape of heart bench, the invitation was to feel a deep opening in your groins. The invitation here is to not feel an opening in the groin. So you wanna have as many pillows as you need underneath. So I'm gonna come back so the back side of me, my low back, like below my waistband, touches the pillows or the blankets or the bolster that's behind me. And I'm gonna lay down, make sure there's another blanket, or pillow, and I'm gonna let my knees open to the side with this, these blankets touching my ankles and touching my thighs, so that when I open my legs, they don't open as far as they could. It holds them up so the muscles that are on your thigh bones can relax. Laying down, an extra blanket or pillow could come across your belly. You could have blankets and blocks and pillows underneath your elbows and have your arms in. You could have your arms out wide. Beyond the challenge of being still in restorative yoga is finding the right props today so that you don't feel a stretch and giving yourself permission to not feel this in the muscles. Steph, if you can put something else under the back of your head, your jaw, I think, might relax, your shoulders might soften. I know we're getting to the point in the practice where you're running out of pillows and blankets around. That's smart, I like that idea. If you have an extra article of clothing or um, something to put over your belly or your chest, even if you're not cold, but putting something over, kind of snuggling in. Maybe you even put something over the, yeah, Bernie, if I can still see your face, it's not restorative, right? I need you to, to be completely covered. Maybe put something over the eyebrows, inviting the worry lines. 
We've seen eye pillows at yoga studios. They can invite the eyes to relax. We're doing a lot of looking these days, right, through this medium. Can you invite the, the edges of the eyes to soften? This is David, David White's contemplation in his book, Consolations, about the word rest. Rest is the conversation between what we love to do and how we love to be. Rest is the essence of giving and receiving, an act of remembering imaginatively and intellectually, but also psychologically and physically. To rest is to give up on the already exhausted will as the prime motivator of endeavor with its endless outward need to reward itself through established goals. To rest is to give up on the already exhausted will as the prime motivator of endeavor with its endless outward need to reward itself through established goals. To rest is to give up on worrying and fretting and the sense that there is something wrong with the world unless we are there to put it right. Hmm. To rest is to fall back literally, literally or figuratively from outer targets and shift the goal not to an inner static bullseye, an imagined state of perfect stillness, but to an inner state of natural exchange. And the template of this natural exchange is the breath the autonomic giving and receiving that forms the basis and the measure of life itself. We are rested when we are a living exchange between what lies inside and what lies outside. When we're an intriguing conversation between the potential that lies in our imagination and the possibilities for making the eternal image, internal image real in the world. We are rested when we let things alone and let ourselves alone to do what we do best, to breathe as the body intended us to breathe, to walk as we were meant to walk, to live within the rhythm of our lives. When we give and take in an easy foundational way, we are closest to the authentic self and closest to that self when we are most rested. To rest is not self-indulgent. To rest is to prepare to give the best of ourselves and to perhaps more importantly, arrive at a place where we are able to understand what we have already been given. A lot of us are having trouble resting and sleeping now. So maybe we invite ourselves to rest with what is. And maybe that's a spinning mind or a worrying heart. Maybe we invite ourselves to rest with not knowing. We can rest even as we wonder, am I doing it right? Is this enough? We can notice that every thought that we have has a period, an end, and we can take that moment, that pause between that period and what comes next to breathe in and to breathe out. We can make it a big breath. We can allow it to be a gentle breath. You'll have this shape invites you to rest with an open heart, with space to breathe. With whatever is coming up.
Notice if there is a sense of waiting, anticipation, or expectation. Lean into it. Notice how able you are to be uncertain and still breathing. To not know what comes next and yet be gentle. Connecting with your courageous, wise, thinking beyond words heart. Let's all take a deep breath in together and sigh. And snuggle the arms closer into the side body. Maybe use the hands to lift the legs up so the feet are on the ground. Maybe let the knees knock in. Maybe a gentle sway side to side. And then coming to center, press the feet down, shift your hips to the left and roll off of the blankets that you have underneath you or pillows and come down to the floor. You can have the right arm under the head as a pillow. Hmm. And press the hands down, come up to sit. and move, move the props off of your mat that were underneath you, except for if you used a blanket to have under the head and a little bit of it on your shoulders, leave that there. And then maybe you had rolled up blankets or cushions underneath your, the sides of your legs. You could bring them now underneath the back of your legs to lay down for your Shavasana. This might be a great time to put on socks because of the warmth, because of the coziness. It's an extra great time to have a blanket to put over the top of you. So again, this could be a couch cushion, a pillow underneath the legs, laying down onto your back. Whatever blanket you have here, gently resting on the shoulders allowing the head to fall back now, not intending to bring the chin to the chest. So depending on the, the length of your neck or how your shoulders feel, you might want nothing under your head. You might instead prefer to have this blanket over the top of you with your arms right by your side or out. Some people find that a few blankets or a weight across the belly invite a relaxing and a deepened breath. Some people prefer to be left alone and have space.
This one's all about you. The secret is they all were. But let this be what allows you to feel connected to the earth, to feel relaxed, to feel held, supported, able to sit back and down. When you arrive, no rush to get there. Take a few inhales and exhales. Let go a few sighs or jaw wiggles. Maybe stretch the feet and toes and fingers and hands and then soften. David White said, rested, we are ready for the world, but not held hostage by it. Always we are figuring out our balance of rest and action, of day and night. Invite yourself to find a quality of rest here. And when you do, enjoy it. Breathe into it. And then sigh. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free.
You notice as the sensations and the thoughts come into your awareness. And be gentle with them, with yourself. And allow yourself these precious moments to be awake and rest. To let the physical body know that the mind and the heart want to work with it. No need to push. Receive the pull of gravity. Receive that force drawing you to pause and rest close to the ground. And begin to deepen your breath. Maybe that happens with inhales and exhales, or sighs. Maybe it happens with movements. Maybe it happens by drawing, drawing the hands to the thighs or the belly and feeling the rise and fall like the tides of your breath. Maybe you shake the head gently, no, and yes. Wiggle the jaw side to side. And then as you are ready, draw the knees in. And give yourself a hug. Rock side to side. A big rock, a little rock. And as you're ready, Land over on your right side. Give yourself a hug. Thank yourself for carving out this time to practice. No effort on the yoga mat is wasted. We come away from practice a little more who we are so that everyone who interacts with us for the rest of the day gets to connect to our wisdom and grace and beauty. Thank you for practicing yoga. As you're ready, build your way to come up to sit. Maybe you sit on the edge of something. Maybe you sit wherever you've been practicing, just as you are. Mm. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Lift your heart and bow your head. We are more wise and courageous than we know. It is only in looking back that we see all the wisdom and courage it took to go through the times that have been behind us. I truly believe the same will be true as we move forward. So as you lift your heart and bow your head, I invite you to chant the sound of Om with me once to close the practice and then chant Shanti, peace, three times together. 
sending the peace of the practice deep inside you where you won't forget it, sending the peace of the practice out to someone who couldn't be here, sending it out to wherever you think it will do the most good. And together, let's inhale. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Lift your face, draw your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows, a gesture of trusting your wisdom. Exhale, bow forward to you, seal in your practice. Lokat samasta sukhino pavantu. May all beings everywhere, that includes you and me, be happy and free. Namaste. Thank you.